Um, so when I was um, when I was waking up this morning, I decided, fuck it, I'm just going to go back to sleep. And then two hours later, it's half nine. And I'm like, oh, fuck's sake, it's, it's really late. And when I go to bed at the same time, I normally wake up at the same time because I've been going literally from four minutes past 12 to, say, two minutes past 12 to 11.58. That difference is the, is, is the difference between when you wake up, for example... If it takes you 10 minutes to get to sleep and I go to bed five minutes before 12, it means I fall asleep five minutes after 12, right? And if I need, say, exactly seven hours, I'll wake up at exactly, say, I don't know, what's the maths? Four minutes, five minutes past seven. Yeah. So going to bed at the same time is like, it's so powerful. And I and I realized from starting to do this religiously again, um, that if I don't go to bed at the same time, I wake up earlier because my body's like, you need to be extra tired the night before. Otherwise, you won't be as tired at the same time. And you'll keep going to bed later and later and later. Before you know, it, it's half 12 and you're getting up at half seven, whatever. But the point I'm saying is this, that if you decide to go back to sleep after you've woken up, there's a reason why you've woken up, whether it's half seven, seven, half six, eight, eight thirty. Yeah. The minute you wake up the first time, get up because your brain's had enough sleep. If you go back to sleep again, you go into another deep sleep cycle. Yeah. And then you wake up not just 20 minutes later, two hours later. And then, <laughs> and I find myself more tired and yeah, yawning 100%, more. I'm like a dozy 100%. retard, just like, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> and then the whole day's delayed because it's delayed by two hours. And so it's crucial to get up when you wake up. Yeah, bro, I kept getting into a habit of just going back to sleep because there was nothing to do. And then I'd just wake up and then it would be like half 11. And then by the time it gets to like 11, half 11 at night, and I'm like, I should be going to bed now. I'm still wide awake because I've already been up 12 hours here. So, and then it's just, it just cycles. The only way I figured it out was I just stayed awake for a whole 24 hours. So I had to fall back asleep really early. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's what, what I used to do. I used to have a choice. <clears throat> if I kind of missed the train, I can either wait for the next one, which is 24 hours later, right? When you go back to bed or you go to bed <laughs> half an hour earlier each night to catch up. You can't just go to bed, say, you know, if you went to bed at two the night before, you can't just go to bed at 12 because your brain's in your brain's mindset. It's actually only 10 o'clock. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you have to literally go like half an hour, 50 minutes earlier each night. So your brain doesn't really know the difference. Or as you said, wait 24 hours. Um, and but then if you do that, you'll be so tired that you're going to need the extra sleep that you're going to yeah. have a shit day the next day. But as you said, you'll be even more tired for the next night. And then yeah, so yeah. Wednesday, you'll kind of just get just the right amount of sleep so this is why people have some sleep issues because they don't have a sleep routine and if you look at nature the sun rises pretty much at the same time minus two minutes or add two minutes every single day so when people go to bed half an hour different 45 minutes 20 minutes body's like dude what the fuck's going on that's like the sun coming up um at eight and then coming up at 8 30 and then coming up at 7 30 and it's like what was going on i was having a lion Son, you can't do that. Like we, we, how are we supposed to? How are flowers are supposed to blossom and sheep supposed to come out of the sheep's ass when you don't? When you chop and change, the birds come up and then they go back to sleep again. They're like, "What's going on? Do I get the worm or not?" See, I, I actually realised that because I was so adamant. I used to get up half five every morning, uh, and I was so adamant to just keep doing that, or like four o'clock every morning. It did kind of change, but it was usually before six. Did that every morning. So before before sex or before six before six i'm single now but it was before sex but now it it's just before, before six, six. You yeah, must yeah, have yeah. Had a lot of energy then yeah <laughs> um <laughs> but i used to try and do that all year round and i now realize that naturally like it's uh, like seven eight o'clock is when i get up in the winter purely because like you say it's when the sun comes up in it you can't get up at the same time all year round because otherwise your body's still like dude what the fuck are you doing uh, like, i don't have an alarm clock either now because i know that when i wake up that's when i'm gonna wake up do you know what? That's so amazing to hear that. I rarely hear that. I know it's the same thing that when it was summer, I'd wake up naturally five, six. Right. Even if and and in the winter, it is always eight o'clock. If my blind is closed, my curtains, are, I don't have yeah, curtains, yeah. but if the, if the shutters <laughs> are closed, right, even if it's dark outside, it's still eight o'clock. And it was like when I realized it's when I was at 21, right, I'm 27, eight now why why is this and it's to do with the sun like yeah. the sun is so low energy so everything in the universe plants trees whatever charges by it and so we are in sync with it that's why 
that's why I don't believe in curtains because <laughs> no, I don't have curtains. I no, no, there were cur- cur- there were curtains behind you. Yeah, it's like no, no, no. This is this isn't my room. This is my. Oh, no, okay. She <laughs> moved out and I'm podcasting it, but my room is just the shutters, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's because when the sun comes up at five, my body's seeing that sun without me having to open my eyes. It's telling myself it's time to get up, so I'm waking up naturally from say when the sun comes up in the summer to getting up say i don't know seven o'clock right whereas yeah. what people do is they set their alarm for say seven and naturally they're awake at 10 after they've had late at 10 coffees so yeah. it's i always tell to people don't have curtains don't have curtains you see, the sun is powerful i see I, I i appreciate that because i used to sleep with the curtains open but there's this there's a lamp post right outside my window <laughs> And if I'm trying to get to sleep, it's just shining in. Oh, and it, and that, that's even worse, because then that really, really can't get to sleep. So now Thank it's like, you know. I keep a little gap where I can't see the street light, but the sun can come through. It's, oh, that it's, would piss me right yeah, off. Yeah, it's well annoying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we move, we move. I still get up early enough. Not at the moment, lockdown kind of fucked it, but... Oh, well, it's what it is. Anyway, um, ask, ask me a question. Uh, a really unique question, which I can really uniquely explain. What was the best thing about 2020 for you? Best thing was... Oh, like Best thing that happened, best experience, best memory. I mean, that, that that's a boring question. Ask oh, me now. Oh, come on. Uh, okay. Uh, not, not about me, about what, what my wisdom, right? <laughs> um, Something I can teach. What did you have for dinner? Oh, I baked beans and pork sausage. What type of sausage? <laughs> it's fucking mad. It's a sausage. <laughs> it had pork in it, wrapped in a condom. It was a sausage, right? Something <laughs> like a profound wisdom question. Like, if you met uh... Jesus, what would you say to him? First you oh, oh would you have you ever there's a there's a thought experiment where it's like the trains on the tracks and you can either it's already gonna naturally it's gonna run over five people but you have the choice to switch the track so it only runs over one person would you make the would you let nature run its course five people get batted by a train or would you switch it and but you've caused this so only one person does and the five people are saved I'd walk the other way and forget <laughs> I ever saw it. No, because to me, <laughs> to me, that's killing. That's killing somebody, and yeah. I can't live with him looking at me going, "You're a bastard." <laughs> I would rather have nothing to do with it. And somebody else who put them there, or you know, the train driver, he can be responsible. I'm not letting another human's fuck ups affect my ability to live happy on this planet so i wouldn't do anything about it whether it's five but, or one but by by not doing anything about it the five people would get it's not my problem uh, all right all right i respect it I respect it's not it. my problem it's like, <laughs> for example yeah obviously if i had to make a choice it'll be kill the one and let the five live obviously like no, you know, so, you, like... so you, you would make choices if i had to make a choice but this is the but... thing you do have to right you... I'll, I'll save the five then you'd save the five yeah, because they've got five parents, five siblings, five cousins, five whatever. Do you know, yeah, yeah, no, I actually, I respect so that a lot. So imagine five people looking at me going, you're going to save my son, you're going to save, all right, I know what you're going to say, you're going to save my son, right? Or one person <laughs> going, you're going to save my son. I'm really sorry. And then you move on. I couldn't have the guilt of five people looking at me. So yeah, I'd save, I'd save the five, of course. Um, But oh, yeah. I, I'm trying to avoid it. Um, yeah, like, yeah, I'd, I would, I'd jump off the train and just walk away. It's like, for example, if you are in your car and you see an accident, do you wait around as witness, having to wait for the police, having to wait for the insurance, having to wait for the lawyers, having to write a letter? Fucking hell. I was only going to Tesco to get some bread. Yeah. <laughs> or do you just like, I didn't see it, I didn't see it, I didn't see it. Did you see anything, sir? Nope. I was uh, speaking to Jesus in my head. I saw nothing. You know what I mean? So, so do you hope that somebody else saw it? Or do you just want to live your life in as peaceful as possible without any problems even if no one else saw it or oh, it's not my problem you should have been looking where you were going <laughs> i don't know about that one actually i think i would i would just assume wow but then you could say the same thing about if you saw someone like fall over in the street would you just walk Absolutely. away and be, be no, like no, someone else could help them no 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 if i saw um someone getting kidnapped a baby whatever just falling out the basket yeah. or somebody running out Somebody trips over like an old lady. I'd immediately stop the car, get out and help them. But okay, yeah, yeah. if, for example, it's a it's a crash, it's it's not necessarily 
that person that could have a problem. It could just be you've chipped the car and, you know, you need a witness for legal oh, yeah. purposes, but they could be completely fine. But if someone's fallen over, my natural um, instinct is to go and help them and nurture and say, you OK, and then take them for coffee afterwards, you know? Yeah. So that that's different. But it's merely just problems of legal bollocks like getting married it's just a fucking load of nonsense you oh, love yeah, something or you don't what's a piece of paper gonna gonna do i've said that for years i genuinely have said that for years like i think if if i ever were to it would be it wouldn't be like oh now we're finally a couple it's like oh no it's just what people do in it I'd, like, I'd probably marry my dog <laughs> i don't no, think you can she loves me she um you know i wouldn't i wouldn't you know all these rights change eventually you know trans rights gay marriage you can marry a horse in some countries like it's just government allowing paperwork for a policy so at some point man will be able to marry his best friend aka a dog don't don't mark this out it's going to happen at some point i think like, i think, in fact, I think somebody someone married, married the eiffel tower yeah yeah someone married the eiffel tower as well so I've married a car in America. It's like a red car or something. Yeah, bro, I've seen that. I've seen that. He's like hugging, he's like kissing the front. Bro, that's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's, it's, oh, it's some weird shows like My Strange Addiction and stuff like that. Yes. Where things like that. Oh, bro, it's people like eating plasticine and shit like that. <laughs> right. Um, oh. So I'm going to ask you a question, right? Um, there you go. You see at the back of your wall, you've got a, a tape stream, right? Yeah. Um. That looks to me, um, a mixture of crystals, things in harmony, equal balancing itself out, an eye, a hand. I can see an eye. I can see a hand. Yeah. I can see a face of like a um. You know when Crash Bandicoot? Oh, Whoopi Gone. Yeah. Oh, bro, bro, bro. <laughs> That's not gonna be there. It just looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> like, like, right. When you like reach another level and you get a Whoopi Gone, right? Crash Bandicoot. Yeah. The it looks like that. Thing. Yeah. But it's interesting if you cut that in half and then flip it round, it will be exactly the same. So that yeah. leads me on to um, harmonies and and vibrations. Um, I realised that when I have a shower and I play happy positive music, I start dancing in the shower. And I realise if I don't play music, I'm not dancing. I realise if you put music on, where it matter where you are, people start to dance. Their foot starts to move, their mm. hand starts to boot. And I'm looking at them and their foot's tapping in time with the tune, right? So I, I do deliveries and I have a speaker play music and I can just see people around. Some people are like, imbecile playing music in the street. Who do you think he is? And then the other people, they're like, yeah, party time. And there's just people just like, you know, minding their own business sitting there and he's tapping his foot. And I can see him. He doesn't even know that he's tapping his foot. And yeah. we naturally want to be in harmony with our surroundings, whether it's doom, 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 like some illegal rave or just Stevie Wonder playing his song. We naturally start to vibrate to the surroundings. Like if you have a, a glass and you put your finger around it and go, yeah. all the other glasses at the same frequency will start to do the same thing. And just as an awareness of when it happens in reality, we're no different to that glass vibrating and making the other one vibrate because the guy is just dancing his foot's just tapping and i just love that we dance to to sound because we don't feel in harmony with it otherwise do you know why i think some people do some people don't because obviously everything like literally everything that exists has a frequency and resonates at a frequency obviously all kinds of music also have different frequencies like trance music and drum and bass music are different frequencies they affect different people in different ways so i think when the people call you an imbecile for playing music out loud that's because the music you're playing doesn't match their frequency so they don't like it but then when people start tapping their feet that's because the music you're playing does match that frequency like if you play sad music around a happy person they don't like it if you play happy music around a sad person they don't like it but switch them around everyone's happy except the sad people they're still sad but yeah for example right, i was at a train station a few years back and i was playing um the radio one which is just pop tunes right and the lady across the track said can you turn that off i said why <laughs> I said, why? I'm not doing anything wrong. It's not illegal. And, um, I'm not offending anyone. No one's reported me to the police. The police haven't come on and said, you know, due to public order, can you turn it off? So I'm not going to let a negative vibration win over a positive vibration. Because as you can see over there, there's six people dancing. And there's you, a whining little shit, telling me to turn it off. And when I said that back to her, she said, well, at least play opera. So what you just said is a fine example. Mm. If it was opera, she'd start going, Lah! 
and all the other people over there, the five youngsters, be like, shut up, you fucking posh prick. Turn that shit off. Put back, you know, Stormzy or something or Eminem. <laughs> but really what it comes down to is you can't always make everyone happy because it's always no. going to be negative and positive people. So what do you do? You fend for the majority. And hopefully that should be positive vibrations. But it See, probably I, won't because most people... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say for the majority i'd say do what you do and then more than likely the majority will be with you but if they're not that's just not your crowd like if i if i go into there's a a club near me there's uh monday every monday night it's they call it emo night it's like alternative night so it's all rock music heavy music stuff like that if you walked in there started playing hardcore rave tunes the majority would hate it a few would probably love it but the majority would hate it and that doesn't mean that you should then start playing the music they want. That just means you should go find a different crowd to play your music to. Yes, very true. <clears throat> right. Um, think of a um a color. Yeah. Think of a number. Yeah. Now come up with a question with those two <laughs> in it. Um. If you could only eat seven things that are the color purple for the rest of your life <laughs> well how's this going to be worth not uh, worth well, value in 50 bro, years time bro because you said think of a, a color and a number <laughs> what else relate it to energy at least <laughs> oh ah oh, ah ah oh, fuck, that's this is an education platform um platform for goons They're two very obscure numbers and colours. Not really obscure, but they're quite hard to fit into a question together. All right, just think of another question. <laughs> you could have told me this before I came on. I could have had I could have had a few questions. Add something into it about vegans. Ah, ah, there we go. You've got a um, vegan behind you. Ah, this is this is one I've always thought. Do you think that at some point in our lifetime? people will it, like the change will be so rapid that people will have to go into a restaurant and ask for the meat eaters menu or do you think it's always going to be the case of going in there and asking specifically for a vegan and vegetarian menu because you know you get given the standard menu and then you have to ask for the special vegan menu do you think it'll flip around at any point in our lifetime or do you think that's like way way in the future if restaurants want to continue um having customers um, <laughs> and, and, and customers change from meat eaters to vegans to vegetarians to halal whatever you can't have a halal restaurant halal you know halal mcdonald's or vegan mcdonald's because they're just there's not enough buildings right yeah, for yeah. the small minority of people who are vegans or halal whatever so it will be rather than just one big menu and it's all just jumbled and mixed up where people are like, can you please show me where the vegan section is? It literally will be, as you said, different menus. And there'll be, it's so like years ago, when you walk into a restaurant, smoking or no smoke, or non-smoking area, non-smoking area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been here before? Yes, I have. Um, vegan, vegetarian, halal, whatever. And then you'll just, you'll just choose, right? And, um, and you'll get given a certain menu. So it will be, as you said, different menus. And if you were the group of people, to a Muslim, to a vegan, one's vegetarian, they all have just different menus. And to be honest, it won't really cause much issues for a kitchen or a company because they're still making dishes that they already know. They might have to separate the ingredients, you know, in the fridge yeah. for whatever legal moral reasons. But it's not going to do much. And it will just keep customers coming back in because it's happening. There's only going to be more vegans, more halal places you got to go with the flow, otherwise you lose your demand, and therefore there's no supply. But this is what I mean. Do you reckon it will, in our lifetime, the meat eaters will become... Because obviously vegans, uh, vegetarians, halal, that's all, in the grand scheme, the minority of people who go to a restaurant. The minority of people that go out to eat. in like Overall, in certain places like Brighton and Bristol, like most of them are vegan or veggie. But like the min minority of these people, do you reckon in some point in our future, the minority will be the meat eaters? So like, absolutely. Because yeah, so many people are going vegan and veggie, they'll slowly overtake and there'll be way more of them than there are. Because I think a third of the UK is vegetarian, at least. 
Absolutely. So it's like all this fake, fake meat, like corn and shit like that. Oh, you'll have no, no, you'll, you'll have um, the vegan people who eat the fake meat, right? And then they'll be with their meat eater mate next to them. And they'll be like, oh, what have you got? Oh, I've got, I'm a, 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 I've got a, a vegan burger. Oh, let, let me try a bit. And then what will happen is, is that he'll end up trying a bit of that burger. And then they'll be like, oh, it's actually not that bad. And then next time they go out for dinner. And then she'll order a vegan burger and it'll be like, yeah, do you know what? I'll try that vegan burger. It wasn't too bad. Before you know it, that yeah. person trying vegan food and veggie food that he's not having his 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 meat meal. And if you divide that by every person who's got a mate who's a vegan who tries their burger instantly, you've literally changed like 100 percent of the one percent you know what i mean yeah, and so yeah, now yeah, you've yeah. got less people and then like 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 cancer it just spreads before you know it he then changes his mi mate's mind and then you've got half the table all trying this veggie fake vegan burger that the beef just 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 goes out of date and so naturally <laughs> when people get used to that tasting veggie burger and it tastes just like a burger and they feel better or it's cheaper, then they're just going to be happy with that. And then the meat eaters will just die out. And as you said, it'll just be about natural plant based food, which is what we've all come from in the first place. And, and, and you could say global warming will naturally sort of fix itself because there'll be less cows and less fills and eating for the cows. And it will just, everything balances out. Mm. But yeah, I do. There'll be less meters and it will be. <laughs> meters. I like that. Less meters. <laughs> <laughs> less meat eaters, less meat. No, no, it's because it's, it's, it's a mouthful, so meat eater, isn't it? But no, it's just meters. Meaters, what? Ah, yeah, yeah, that. fucking meaters. Fuck mm. off. Yeah, so I'll do down, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so it will change, and there'll be um the the majority will go from say I don't know eighty percent to seventy to sixty, and then eventually they'll they, they can't have a fridge full of meat, fridge full of vegan shit. They'll have to choose like there's not enough space what do we do yeah. and then it's, it's whatever the majority is at that point and then if the majority is vegan and veggie then the meat eaters will die out and they'll just all be sat around a kebab van you know waiting for some donna <laughs> because every restaurant is just selling plant-based food and you can think about you know, the pulled pork phase which lasts for about a year everyone was selling pulled pork and yeah. now they're gone so if people start having this veggie pate then everyone's going to start doing veggie pate and then eventually if everyone's eating it everyone will start doing veggie pate because no one's going to go to mcdonald's if kfc do your veggie wrap and it's what's yeah, happening yeah. right now kfc yeah. do it a fucking chicken shop you know <laughs> <laughs> Mac mcdonald's <laughs> selling beef burgers fillet of fish what the fuck is a fish doing in there <laughs> It's just a bunch of fish in the freezer. Are we going to get eaten or what? We've been here for years. No one's right. eating us. Fuck you now. Put us what back in the ocean. <laughs> oh, fuck it out. Wow. Wow. I'm, I'm glad you... Because I've always thought... I have always thought... And I, it just makes me laugh when people are like, oh, I could never be vegan. I'll be like, well, you're going to be the weirdo one day. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Labels. Forget the vegan label. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Salad, like you're just eating a salad. You'd happily have a burger and a bit of salad. So why not just take the burger out? You know, you're eating a salad, and it's a mind thing of of, of a vegan lifestyle and culture. And it all comes down to don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me yeah. how to live my life. And it's like, yeah, yeah. no, you feel better eating olives and nuts and seeds. That's yeah, just, yeah. You have it with salt on it when you go to the pub. You know, so you just eat the same thing without the salt, without the burger afterwards. And it's just like, oh, yeah, most of the food I'm eating, not maybe not most, a good portion of it is what's classed as vegan and veggie anyway. So it's just the label behind it. It's like an autistic person. You don't need to say, hello, I'm John, I'm autistic. Yes, we know we know you, John, you're our mate. Hello, I'm autistic. John, we know you're autistic. <laughs> it's just John. It doesn't need the label behind it. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. I want to have this food because I'm a vegan. I want to have this food because I like nuts and leaves. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, although it is, it's nice to have the label so when you go in a restaurant, you can just simplify everything. Because I've tried going in and not using it and just being like, oh, I can't eat meat, I can't eat dairy, and I can't eat eggs. And they just turn to me and go, so you're a vegan? I'm like, well, if that makes it easier, yes. <laughs> what allergies do you have? We might get sued. No, 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 no I'm just a vegan. Oh, thank God. Right, although, if, if you don't trust the place to do it properly if you tell them you've got a dairy allergy and an egg allergy they take it way more seriously because they don't want to get sued yeah it's true 
when I used to work in a restaurant, as soon as somebody says I've got an allergy, I called my manager immediately and I fucked off as far down the restaurant because <laughs> I do not want anything to do with uh... with <coughs> you dying because I pressed the wrong button, I told the manager the wrong thing. Uh, I'm an allergy. One second, please. Oh, well. <laughs> Anthony, come over here. She's got an allergy, and I fuck off and clean that table. That's the only time I used to clean the tables. There was <laughs> someone with an allergy because I did not want. It was the guy with the shaved head, the glasses who served me. I don't think I did, madam. I was over there cleaning tables. If you died, it's nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to cover your ass. It is scary, but you do have yeah, to cover yeah. your ass. It's dog to dog in this legal world because it's scary. People have been sued. Not even to do with that, just your conscience of I killed that person because I, I didn't tell the manager the right thing. It's scary. Like that's yeah. in your conscience forever. Yeah, like where are because I, I work like my day job is uh, in a Holland and Barrett, and I don't know if, if no one really realizes the amount of like training that goes into it about no because you're set you're essentially selling natural versions of medicine, so you've got to do like a lot of fucking training to do with it. And then when I first started, I didn't know anything, and like someone came in, they were like, "Oh, this, this, and this." So I recommended them something. They left the store. I looked in the book, saw how many health warnings were with it. I was like, "Oh." <laughs> Oh, bro, I felt so, that's why I know all my stuff now, because I felt so bad. I was like, I hope I haven't killed him. <laughs> it's like someone comes in for constipation. Uh, what can you recommend me? Uh, well, I've got this great tablet called Viagra. Do you say one a day and you'll be shitting beautifully? Oh, thank you. What's your name? Oh, thank you. I'm going to leave a good customer feedback online, right? <laughs> and he leaves his feedback online. After speaking to this guy who recommended Viagra, I did not have, I had a fucking erection for days. And I was still not shitting because this fucker told me the wrong thing. I swear to God, that happened to my old manager. She got a phone call. There were customers in the store and you can't walk away with a phone. It's cool. It's a wired one because they're still living in the 1970s. Uh, and she was there. She was on the phone. And then the customers could hear what he was saying on the phone. He was like, uh, I came in for, I think it was horny goat weed. It might have been something else. But he was like, I came in for that. Weed. Yeah. And he was like, and I've taken it and oh it didn't work. So I took a bit more. And now I've, I've I've been erect for four days, <laughs> and she was there like, and he was like, "Help! Like I don't know what to do." And she, oh he, he, and he, he was like on the phone like, "It's throbbing, like it it hurts like that." And she was just like, trying not to laugh, and like, and he was from a store. He was from a store like fifty miles away, and you know he phoned our store because he didn't want to phone his local store because they would have known who he was. <laughs> so he just phoned a random Holland and Barrett to try and get him to help him with this problem. But she was like, you're just going to have to wait it out. <laughs> Those fucking jokes. Uh, I've had a wank six times and it's not even 12 and it's not going down. Yeah, he was, he he he, he described in detail everything. And she was, oh, she was just not, not a fan of the conversation. The customers were loving it. They took ages with their orders just so they could hear how it fucking resolved. They wanted to know. They were invested in the story. <laughs> So, yeah, what I do is, um, for example, if you uh, have a problem with a certain store, right, or you want to get information without asking them because they'll know it's you, right, and you, or you're scared that they might say no, what you do is you call up other stores to get the majority of what they say. Then you go into your local store. And if they then say no, you say, well, actually, you're wrong because I phoned this store, this store, this store, this store. And they all suggest. And then they call that store. And then they said, did you say this? Yep. OK, no problem. And then the old local store gives you it um, because, as you said, you don't want to you have to deal with these people. It's like going to HR when a colleague is wants to fuck you. Right. It's not as easy as just going to HR because you've now got to work with this person. It changes your social dynamics. You know, people take sides and it affects your life. It's not just as easy as going to hr following the rules and yeah yeah you know it, it's tricky if you go to a restaurant and that you, that your burger's not cooked properly and then you call up hr and get a free voucher they're going to see you as because their boss comes down on them and says you know this person said that their burger wasn't cooked and they call you up and say i'm really sorry about your experience next time you come in you're the fucker that went to hr my boss gave me shit hey what would you like to eat yeah it's it's it's, it's not a natural thing so always go to the the other thing you can't see to get information because then you you it's all about for me it's all about being in harmony with as many things and people and surroundings as possible yeah and if you've got to go to another store to be in harmony with your local say wagamamas you've got to do it 
I mean, I rarely, I rarely complain anyway. Like, unless something is really like, like if I go somewhere and my food's not the best, I'm like, well, I cook for myself sometimes, and the food's not the best. Like, I can't knock it. Like, but, but like if if I go somewhere and like I don't know, like a rat's just in my burger or something, I probably would complain. Even then, I wouldn't complain to their boss. I'd just <laughs> go to whoever got me the burger and be like, I don't want to make a scene. But get me another burger, please. Like I, I, well, like, I never, I never go to a boss. I never, I never dob people in. I don't think. It's like, bro, I ordered a fish and you give me a burger. Like, can you? I'm not gonna complain, but can you please sort this out? Yeah, yeah, like that's it. Like, like I, 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 it happened once. I ordered a side and then they bought me the 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 main version of the side and charged me for it. So I like said to the guy who bought it and he was like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. And then he came back over, refunded the, the difference. And he was like, my manager twice said, as much. yeah, he was like, my manager said it was my fault. So I've had to pay for it. So I gave him the money back as a tip because I was like, well, now I feel <laughs> bad. Like, and uh, to be fair, I realized I just caused unnecessary hassle for him. But like, I still didn't, I just, I ain't about that. Like, and, I know. And also what's interesting working. is, is that <laughs> most policies, unless it's in your contract, you don't have to pay for your fuck ups it's the manager feeling yeah. the pressure from his boss when the boss says you know why is where's this six pound gone that he doesn't want to have that pressure so he then passes it on to the the, the worker yeah it's not in the contract that like, you've got to pay for that mistake and that 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 is that could have been prevented and you're a very bad human being <laughs> Yeah, no one ever reads a contract, though. Like, I've, the amount of places I've worked, I've never once read a contract. I just kind of know oh. what's right and wrong. I was... ...on work for my place, because I had literally the handbook as my Bible, right? If they said <laughs> something, like, you need to stay an extra minute to, to clean that table, and I'm like, well, according to the handbook, when my shift <laughs> finishes, I'm allowed to go, and you are no longer my manager, and it's like, can you just fucking clean that table? Nope. I am not cleaning the table. As you can see, they've just started their shift. They're getting paid. I am not. They can clean the table. And, you know, things like holiday pay and, you know, how long your break is. If it's 20 minutes or 30 minutes, do you get, you know, the extra time? And to the second or minute, I was a political cunt because it was like, I'm sorry, but I get 20 minutes. I've added 19 minutes in two seconds. And I would lay downstairs in the staff room until my time happened because i'm just the number to the company i'm just the policy no one gives a shit if i've had my extra 50 minutes 50 seconds break after being on shift for say four hours so it's up to me to get what i want so reading the handbook and knowing your rights is you've got to have control but would you would you count the walk from the staff room to wherever you're stationed as part of your break or is part of their time my break started when I sat on that couch and my ah, yeah, 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 my God, my God. Because I used to do that. <laughs> I, if, I'm on, if I'm on the floor, I'm in front of the customers, which means I can't just take off my shirt because it's customers, <laughs> which means I'm serving the customers by my presentation, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And yeah. customers yeah, yeah, yeah. say on the way, excuse me, can you get me some mayo? Oh, I'm really sorry, but I'm going downstairs for a break. No, company's going to expect me to be like, yeah, no problem, I'll get you mayo. So yeah. no, as soon as I hit that floor, yeah, I yeah. am counting. And I used to literally start my stopwatch and then if the manager will come down and be like how long have you got left 90 minutes 42 seconds but you get away with what you can so you start yeah. your time five minutes after they know you've left so yeah, if, yeah, example, yeah, yeah. if your manager thinks you've gone at four and you've gone at say i don't know quarter past four but they don't know that but you take that 15 minutes of what they didn't know Right. And then you start your 20 minute break. Once they say, are you on break? Yes, I am. How long have you got left? I've just come down 20 minutes. You always get what you want in life. You never yeah. allow somebody to tell you what to do. You take advantage of every single system if you can. And it doesn't come back to bite you because when you die, the only question you're going to ask is, was I happy? Could I have done it differently? And if the answer is yes, you didn't live your life to the fullest. A hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, working for someone else isn't, regardless of if I've manipulated the contract to get as much break as I can. Work actually working for someone else isn't. I'm not gonna when I when I get to the end of my life and look back, I'm never gonna be happy that I've worked for someone else. Like the only way I'll be happy and be like that is when I've got to the point of like working for myself. Working for myself is necessary to begin with. No, work working for someone else is necessary to begin with, but. 
ultimately you just want to work for yourself isn't it <clears throat> yeah working for somebody else is you can never truly be free if you're working for somebody else because yeah. freedom is about applying action to your thought when you think it if you're yeah. working for somebody else You've got all these thoughts coming in your head during the day. Oh, I've got to do this to my keyboard. I've got to fix the mic. Oh, how can I help you, madam? You, you're going backwards and forwards. Yeah, yeah, you're wasting yeah. energy on things you can't control now. You're too tired to go home and then do it because you've been fucking serving Viagra tablets all day. <laughs> and so therefore you're tired and then you sleep and you're just draining your energy. Your energy supposed to raise as you do things. Yeah. Instead, it's draining yourself literally and you've got to get the train walk to the train station you've got to have lunch greg's is full of shit you know crappy preservatives and it's just like i'm in this constant cycle of toxic energy and you can't be free unless you work for yourself i swear by that yeah no i fully agree i appreciate the fact that uh in my job like i say there is a lot of training and i'm quite into like my health and nutrition and stuff so it's like i am still interested and while I'm at work, I am still growing, which is that because there's a whole thing. If you're not growing, you're dying. And for a lot right. of people, work work isn't growth. I'm fortunate enough that my work, 80 to 90 percent of the time is growth. But most of the but a lot of the time, it's just standing around, not doing anything, which at, at that point, I'm on my phone and I'm doing my branding and my marketing and my social media presence. So I am still working. It's just making See, that's good. Yeah, I, I've I've I've. I've landed myself a position where that's possible. Whereas I used to work for a Witherspoons. God, don't Jesus ever work Christ. for a Witherspoons. Kill me. <laughs> yeah, no. No, no, Have you never. seen their stock? Fucking drink stock on Monday morning. Jesus. Um, Who the fuck has this old fucking beer? No one's heard of it. And I'm lifting 400 crates of it. Rudders. Rudders? Ruddles. Some, oh, I don't even know. Some shitty ale. Fucking 99p <laughs> a pint. Oh, bro. Uh, 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 <laughs> it's the McDonald's of the adult world. That is 100% what Witherspoons is. So that that's good, right? So when you thought he's like a train driver, he sat on his phone in his little box on Facebook. There's no growth on Facebook, but doing what you're doing, where you've gone unchecked for tickets and you're working on your business, the same thing you'd be doing at home on yeah, your yeah. phone, you've landed yourself a gold mine because you're making your money, you're not wasting time, you're saving yourself time, and you're doing what you need to do. That's good. But when you're sort of like a customer service with a restaurant and you only you stand and twiddle your thumbs, you can't go on your phone, yeah, you're yeah. wasting your life. Just half the day, there's no customers anyway. That's yeah. dangerous. Yeah, it's I, like I did the temp job uh, stacking shelves at Sainsbury's for five hours the other day, and then straight afterwards, I I cancelled all the other ones because it was the most mind-numbing thing. Thankfully, I was working with another person, so we just had a chat. I made a friend, but Jesus Christ, bro! Like literally, just the, the, the whole five hours, just in two aisles, just stacking drinks. So I was like, "What's going on?" <laughs> oh, it's true. <laughs> if anything makes me grateful of being in my position, it's having done what I call a slave job. The bottom yeah, end yeah, of the yeah. food chain. Restaurants, yeah. clothes, you know, sh- supermarkets, fucking pubs. When you've done that job, you appreciate any job. You yeah, appreciate yeah, sitting yeah. in an office. You can sit down. Like, yeah, you yeah. When you want without asking your manager. So I do believe that you need to experience pain to really appreciate what pain is. Otherwise, you'll always be like, oh, you know, push comes to shove, I can do it. But no, you cannot do it. I see pretty much everyone I know and it works in a restaurant, right? They're depressed, not professionally, yeah, but they're yeah. unhappy. They're anxious, they're depressed, they eat shit, they're fat because they slave away all day. They sit down, their blood clots, and they have a fucking shitty little meal from the restaurant, yeah, right? Yeah. Every single day. And they don't realise that's all full of shit in the first place. Yeah. And yet that's what you eat. Everyone's got a fat ass because they just... <laughs> Honestly, I'm telling you, if you look at yeah. go to restaurants, look at these women, fat ass. It's because of the blood clotting from walking around. They sit down and they have their meal. And I even said this to my colleagues, right? Have you noticed every woman in this place, all the all the managers, not the employees, the managers, because they've yeah. got to deal with yeah, all the yeah, stress. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have the same shape ass and yet they're not fat. Why you're, is that? Their bro, face is slim, their ass is fat. Why? You are you are actually not wrong, and I, I can't imagine any of my old managers will see this. If you do, I'm sorry, but it's true. It, it's it's true. Fat. Their waist is fat. No, Their waist I, is not fat. The bum. It's the same I do, shape. I, I do. I actually get what you mean. But the the thing you said about um, you need to go through the pain to uh, appreciate the pleasure. I, I I started thinking of in case you threw on me. Ask another question. I've already thought of one. So. <laughs> 
and this leads on quite well to it is that, so there's a whole you can't you, there's a whole thing you can't have order without first having chaos because without the chaos you can't understand the order like if everything was just order you wouldn't know but if you have chaos and things go absolutely nuts and then there's order you appreciate it way more which is the same with you can't experience the pleasure without going through the pain my it's not really a question it's like a kind of food for thought type thing obviously the world has been very very chaotic last year do you think we're still in the chaos or do you think we're we, we've reached the order do you think we're it's 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 blessed now ironically everything is linked in the universe if you look at bitcoin right in say beginning of the year it was at say two grand right when the coronavirus came out it's at 30 grand roughly it's going to sort of balance itself out and yeah hit. look at the cases of coronavirus right you've reached the peak of deaths we've gone into lockdown vaccines coming out it's going to drop so we're yeah. going to lockdown's going to reduce there's more vaccines bitcoin's reached its peak people make their money people sell and it drops everything is in harmony right if you look at say global warming we're, we've reached the peak of if we don't change now shit's going to change there's too many human beings so there's governments are losing control it's all the same thing it's all balancing out humans are dying governments gain management not enough forests and, and land we're not eating as much you know it, it's all balancing out no matter yeah, where yeah, you yeah. go it all has the same balance so i do believe that we've reached the the peak because think about it three million people in the uk have had the vaccine and they've ordered say well beyond the amount of humans in the uk so if they keep rolling that out you're going to have the whole of the country literally vaccine within say six months so lockdown is inevitably going to be gone within six months obviously hopefully a lot more everyone's going to be vaccine that wants to be civilization will go back to normal but not how it used to be it will yeah, be yeah you can't yeah, just have it. these fucking chicken shops opening up on the this... same street because you know this is what I thought. I was why I took a walk uh, into my town centre yesterday to go grab some uh, fruit and nuts, I think. Uh, and I was looking around, and there was just so many shops, like big shops as well, like the Debenhams, like the like Marks and Spencers, like so many big, huge, reputable high street brands that have been around for like, longer than we have. They're gone. They they they're just dead. And like everyone's shopping on ASOS and Sheen and Zalfo and things like that. And it's like the the era of the high street and like the physical shops is so so over, man. And that's what it's like fully changed this year. Is everyone's online? Like we're blessed because you've been doing this. I've been doing music. Uh, I've been doing YouTube and stuff. And like our our lives and our professions are online. So it's not been, if anything, it's this year's probably or last year's probably just made us better at the jobs we do. Whereas so many people have lived the past 40 years of their life, getting up, walking into town, going to the shops, working in a shop, getting the bus, like all, all like things that you have to leave the house to do. And now uh, that era is over. That era is over. So now it's time for us because we're, we're like... I, just, I wouldn't say the internet generation but we're way more equipped to live our lives online like that sounds depressing but i mean in terms of like reaching people influencing people and everything like that yeah the stuff that we've been doing over the last five years social media facebook marketing uploading yeah literally there's billions of people that are just starting to learn this and do this yeah. now like yeah, companies, we're, we're OGs. Like, we're companies. OGs how do we make a website? How do we buy a domain name? <laughs> yeah. I've been buying domain names for the last like fifteen years, right? Yeah. yeah no. So we are ahead of the game, which is which is very fortunate. What I will say is that it's dangerous to rely on something that you can't see, right? That could be the bogeyman, a rapist, Father Christmas, or the <laughs> internet. Because at some point, you don't even know that the internet could just disappear for yeah. whatever reason. They yeah, yeah, asteroid yeah. that comes down and fucks up the the electromagnetic field and now what's going to happen every human being is online every human being dies right it's all good you know if you can't get to the supermarket you'll get it delivered but you require they for example amazon require internet and a phone which requires code to to give that to you so now what happens no one's going to get food everyone's going to die apart from the man who's got a vegetable patch in his garden 
But so this actually, me and my uh, producer were talking about this because there was a whole uh, conspiracy about how the, like the one day they were just gonna shut the internet off, and it's not which possible. I, yeah, 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 I know. But he, we, we thought it was funny, and it, it worked for you as well because because you're in the business of talking to people, sharing stories, like uh, meeting new people, gaining new perspectives. If the internet didn't exist. I imagine you'd probably just go out in the street with a megaphone and talk to people. Yes, I would. <laughs> and same with same with me and him. He plays the guitar. I can rap. We can both sing. We he can rap as well. We can sing a little bit. And like it's musical. And instruments existed before electricity. So if that were to happen as well, we'd do the same. You'd be there shouting in the megaphone, asking people what they think about stuff. We'd be there next year playing our instruments. Like we'd still be good. But at the moment, just at the moment, everything is predominantly online. And <coughs> what? What yeah. I will say as a um, powerful advice is you need to go where the majority is going because other, if you don't yeah. go with them, you'll lose out. But at the yeah. same time, you need to be, when they're sleeping, looking elsewhere for a new gold mine, a new yeah, carcass yeah, yeah. of meat. Because at some point, when these greedy fuckers start eating all that meat, you're going to be left out. But at least you know there's a carcass over there you can tuck into if necessary. So you need to be merging online with physicality. So it can't just be all physical online. It can't just without online. It can't just be all online without physical. It needs to be online and physical, but yeah. you need to be able to do the same thing without online. So yeah. online enhances it, but you can do the same thing um, physical. For example, you're a music producer. I'm a podcaster. I can reach people around the world, but I know, as you said, with my phone, <clears throat> I can go into the town centre. They might be all retarded, but I can still do the same thing, and I can speak to them in McDonald's with the microphone. So yeah. I'm protected, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and for example, listeners are all online via internet. If I couldn't reach them, I simply do door-to-door sales. Have you heard about the podcast? So it will or take radio. a longer time. Yeah, it'll yeah. take a longer time, but I can still do the same thing yeah, yeah. should the internet go down. But it's enhanced. So that's all I can really say. Use both. Do not rely on one more than the other. You need to be able to do the same thing without physical and internet. And anything over time will grow and people will trade money because that's the most popular form of currency. So we're yeah. going to be fine. So <clears> it's, <throat> like, it's like when you get really good at what you do, you're essentially just a big fish in a little pond. But the the most powerful part is while doing that is being a little fish in a completely undiscovered pond because like we can be there we can dominate our field like i could dominate youtube you could dominate the podcast industry which we which can I do will, that way, I've been yeah 100 yeah yeah so, I, I, I believe it i back it i've got faith you are the only podcast i've ever been on so at any point if i ever get on another podcast i will mention every single time the first podcast i ever went on just quickly joe rogan sold his um podcasting rights for uh one billion to spotify their stock went up to four billion four mm-hmm. billion i have told this to myself i'm gonna sell my podcasting rights for one billion and spotify is still gonna go up by three billion i don't know if it's gonna be spotify that buy my rights but i will be the number one podcaster if i keep going and i will sell it to whether it's amazon apple spotify not for 100 mil because joe rogan <clears throat> did that and he their stock gone up by four bill i will sell it for a billion i will bleed that company dry mark my words see i've got i've got got a similar thing i've got a similar thing uh in terms of music i've got it written down that five years time i will be I, i can't say i will be the most but i will be one of the most influential musicians in 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 my country uh and i don't mean in streams and views and videos like pop i don't mean popularity i mean influence i mean i can have half the amount of fans that some other people have but the fact is i will have helped change the lives of every single one of those fans so i there's not it's not as measurable as popularity but i'm with you on that like it's you need to have a goal and you need to have a fucking good goal like some people some people be there starting a podcast and be like oh yeah one day i'll get I'll get uh, a thousand a thousand listens on my podcast. It's like, well, that's a shit goal. Because even if you get a thousand <laughs> listens, it's not a shit goal. It's a good stepping stone, isn't it? But like, even if you get that, that's still not enough to make it your career, like fully. You need you need a, you need a good goal. You need a goal that's better than anyone's. Like, I don't really know any. You're the first person I've spoken to who has a goal that most people would find unbelievable. Whereas you don't. You know it's going to happen. 
So I've got I've got hundred thousand downloads right now. I started my Ooh. podcast. In, I started my podcast in Feb. Right. My goal is by March to have three hundred thousand downloads. Right. Wait, you you only so we done the first one in April. You only started two months before that. Yeah, because I Nico was the first guy I did a podcast. Oh with. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then Nico led to you know other people which led to you and all your people but when i went to london i wanted to manifest the person to do a podcast with and like it was the first guy Sorry, which no, led to you... no, sick. <laughs> and, anyway so so back back to that thing um and see what what is powerful is that and i can speak from experience you need if, if i could tell myself how to do something differently or tell somebody else what to do differently, knowing that they have to make their own mistakes and go on their same path. That really what I'm going to say is irrelevant, but you don't have to make mistakes. What I would say to myself is choose a passion that you'd happily do for free for the rest of your life yeah. and you will become rich. If, for example, you choose something which is going to make you money, you're not going to be happy whether you're making money or not. And it all comes down to feeling People yeah. don't care about the money if they feel good. People making loads of money and they don't feel good, they always choose <clears throat> happiness over money, right? So if you understand that, that there is no other alternative, it doesn't matter how much you're making, if you're unhappy, happiness and feeling always wins, like love always wins, right? Yeah. You'd rather love somebody and have nothing, no money, than be married to a rich Russian blonde sexy millionaire if she's just a cunt, right? So choose passion, money will come. Do not choose money. Because at some point you're going to stop, and as like I've just said, my podcast, it take there's a there's a um, a germination period from when a seed is planted to when it grows its first leaf to when it flowers. Yeah, you'd say it takes a whole summer from from spring to summer is when a seed starts to bear fruit. It actually takes longer for say an apple tree, but you get the point of a flower. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes time. So essentially, you're going to be unhappy for nine months, or you're going to be happy from day one. But you don't care if it fucking flowers because you yeah. just have leaves. Always choose passion and money will come because if it doesn't come, you're still doing what you do. It makes you feel good. But money is going to come. And that's what I would tell myself. I always chose ways that will make me money. Right. And because I wasn't happy. Yeah. For two months, I stopped and I started something else and I stopped and I started something else. And I stopped. Uh, yeah, 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 and it was the fucking yeah. 10,000 different ideas. And if I just did what makes me happy, which is talking, talking. <laughs> Talking, 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 talking. That's all I've ever done. That's all I've ever known. Talking to my dad about my ideas and my philosophy. Why don't you tell somebody who gives a shit? Write a book, you know? <laughs> go, and tell the, go and tell the plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, just, my, dad's just, my dad falls asleep and I'm still talking to him. I say, are you listening? <clears throat> yeah. You're not listening, are you? Why fucking not? <laughs> so therefore, this is my passion. I could do this anywhere for free and I'd still be happy. But as you said, money, well, as I said, money comes from passion. The choose passion, do not choose the money. Big yeah, mistake, that, waste your life. That's it. Like last time, last time we spoke, I was, I chose money. And while to be fair, the people I met, the things I was doing, they were amazing. I'm not doing any of it now. I'm using it, like the brand and the marketing and stuff. I'm using it, but I'm using it in music, which makes me happy. It always has made me happy. And like my producer, when I started working with him, he explained the way he looks at making music is it's all an energy exchange so it's all about the energy you put in so if you're and it's the same with not just music if you're doing something it doesn't make you happy you're not putting you're putting unhappy energy into it it's never going to work but like you say even if you've got a a solid strategy to make money if the energy is not there it won't because it's all the world the universe (laughs) is all an energy exchange but then say for music example you could start making like or with podcasting you can start with no idea how you're going to make the money, you're just doing it for doing its sake. And then all of a sudden it's just like opportunity, opportunity, doors open, opportunity. And it's just like, oh shit, there we go. And then you just run with it and then you're fucking happy and you're making money. But but like you say, that's not the point. It just, it, it is a natural progression of doing what you love. Is in, being, Sorry. Is it in your local village, right? And if you're, if you're selling log, logwood, right? and somebody else has got a log fire, eventually they're going to be like, oh, uh, I need some logwood. And do you know anybody? <laughs> yeah, I've got to get my logwood from him. From him. Before you know it, you're supplying the whole village. Yeah, Same yeah. for jam. Have you got any jam? Have you got any honey? Oh, yeah, I know somebody selling honey, selling jam. Before you know it, you've got seven people coming to you for jam. And it just goes to eight, to nine, to 10, to 11, to 12, to 13, to 14. It's a natural process. And I ask, I, I tell myself, rather than trying to make millions... 
so I can have a massage every day. You don't even get a fucking massage a month and you could get one every week. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I'm trying to make money to live a happy life and I can already live this happy life with what I have. And it's like, wow, if I get a massage every week, I've still got money left over. Do I need millions? The answer is no. And that trade will grow. And and um, that that's it right now. I would I would say it's uh, I wouldn't say naive, but one of the things I learned while I was up in Lincoln, because bearing in mind the person I was learning from was originally a multimillionaire. Then he wanted to die. Did he? Yeah, and then he then he went to the Himalayas, trained with a the grandma. Story of wanting, what's the story of wanting to die? Like why? He he made millions, and he woke up every morning, jumped in his Lamborghini. No, nah, he didn't have a Lamborghini at that point. I think he had Aston <clears> Martin. He woke up every morning, jumped in his Aston Martin was driving on his way to work and then every time he got in his car he looked up at the sky and just said take me like please take me away like i just don't want to do this anymore very even multi-millionaire first ever deal 50 mil just into his bank not even like net worth 50 mil straight cash into his bank uh and then he wanted to die for years and then started giving back to people starting charities and stuff started then training with a himalayan yogi become a master a spiritual master and uh, an ascended master that's what it's called and then so now uh, but but even he like mr fucking spiritual like even he will tell you it's naive to believe that money will not help you on your journey to happiness like it's it's not important and it's not the give all and end all of your life but the fact of the matter is if you have money you have freedom and when you have freedom you undoubtedly have happiness unless you're a mug and you've got all this freedom and you just spend it with your head in the sand but if you've got money and you can do whatever you want whenever you want undoubtedly that's going to lead to happiness but then like you say it's also it, it they, they they give and take from each other so it's the happiness will cause the money which will cause the happiness which will cause them and then it just keeps and it's a loop by just <clears throat> you just have to start on the right one you have to start with the happiness rather than the money so I went through the same thing up until 21. I wanted to be a millionaire because I wanted freedom over my decisions and thoughts and control over my life. Yeah. Then I realized it was never con- it was never the money. It was just me having control over living my life how I wanted to, which didn't require money because yeah. I just had to control myself. Right. And then you go for the as you said, like he did the, the young, the monk yogi appreciating everything. I binned everything I ever had. And then you're like, shit, fucking hell, I need need a bed. Fuck, that cost money. Yeah, yeah, the how the fuck am i gonna go to bed <laughs> and it's like the cheapest bed is 200 pounds oh my god how many shifts eight pound an hour time oh fucking hell one <laughs> month for a bed and then i realized my laptop costs this and my pillow costs this and the bed sheets and the fucking washing machine tablets oh my god money i need money right and then i changed my mindset i couldn't force force it to change it was a natural thing where yeah i then got my entrepreneur mindset back of money I want money because I want to do what I want to do with money, which is give back to people. So I need money. And I went for this thing about, you know, not needing asking for money. I still don't have any money, by the way. Like my podcast is eventually hopefully going to make me money. I don't have any money. Right. But that's our point. I have happiness. So I don't need money. And I've got a roof over my head. Should that change? Then, you know, obviously I'll have to start sucking some cock. Right. But until that <laughs> comes, I don't need cash. So the point I'm saying is this, that, um, I realized, okay, I do need money. So then I decided if I could do something forever, what would it be? And it is walking in my local woods, podcasting, which is a conversation. Yeah. And then you realize that's all man has ever had. Conversation in the cage, conversation (laughs) in the cave in some woods. It's like, well, fantastic. I'm set for life. And now anything (laughs) else is a choice. A massage is a choice. It's a choice. TV is a choice. Netflix is a choice. Going to the club is a choice. That's a choice, but it, I do not need that because what I yeah, need yeah. is I walk in the woods, yeah. my uh, my my conversation, which I can get with anyone. Yeah. If I die tomorrow, I die on the biggest high because I didn't need anything else. Everything's yeah. a want, and it's a choice. See, see it's there's a I, I can't remember who said it. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get into the habit of being able to actually say the name of the people I'm quoting because I feel like they deserve credit, but for this instance, can't remember. Harry Potter once said in the philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, no what what is it's uh imagine you had all the money in the world what would you be doing like with your time and then forget oh. about the money and just do it 
So like oh. even if you you could have all the money in the world, you'd probably you'd still be walking in the woods and talking to people. Absolutely true. Because that's the thing. Once you've bought all things that require money, car, house, whatever, what is there to do? And the answer is what makes you feel good. And yes. if that's going to the fucking calf to meet John or playing golf or planting flowers, that doesn't even require money. So again, <laughs> it's just an understanding of why the fuck do I need money? Well, I need it just to basically shelter heat yeah i think i think the the basic human needs do require money unfortunately but like even then they don't but then you're looking at like you know them fellas on youtube that dig holes in the ground and make mud huts like then you're looking at that kind of life that doesn't actually require money but it's also the quality of life we're used to it it, it's not really on par but like I, I, I'm the same because I, I recently I do a lot of writing and I know, like goal setting and everything like that. And then one of the things it, it encompassed everything I want to do, whether I had money or not. And it's to entertain, like it, to literally like whenever I go and I'm in a room, it's not an ego thing. I just enjoy being the most entertain. Oh, my lights just died. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy being the most entertaining person in the room. Like I love making people laugh. I love making people feel good. I love making people forget about their worries. And whether that's through music, comedy, YouTube, uh, conversation, whatever, like it encompasses it all. It's just entertaining. So like whether I have money or not, I'm st- I'd still be entertaining <clears throat> and I'd still be that guy. So obviously <clears throat> people listening to my podcast, they probably listen for wisdom, but I'm a very funny person i'm a personality you, you, you crack me up like what i'm like what i'm like when i'm not teaching it's like how could he be so smart and yet come out with that filth <laughs> yeah, how does the man who speaks about love and happiness say cunt so freely right <laughs> and to, the answer is to me it's just another sound right <laughs> so, yeah, no. so, so so when i'm like talking to my parents and i'm going off on one they're like you're just an attention seeker. It's all about attention. Me, 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 me. Um, oh, yes, God. it is all about me, 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 because it makes me feel good when I'm doing me and talking about me to whoever's listening. If no one's listening, yeah. well, as long as I'm still happy talking to no one, fantastic, right? And it all comes down to just doing what makes you happy. Like when I'm talking shit and whatever, I'm getting a reaction. And to me, I'm making you smile, as yeah. you said. Yeah, yeah. doesn't matter what I'm saying. If I'm making you smile... I feel good. I'm getting a reaction. Are we attention seekers? Yes. But it doesn't matter what you call it. I'm making you happy. I'm happy. Everyone's winning. I, th- I think... I 69. I w- <laughs> Everyone's winning. I w- yeah, no, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I, um, I, watched a, I was watching an interview with him before we jumped on this podcast, but I do think Jim Carrey is like one of the most perfect examples of that because never have I ever seen a man so funny. But how fucking weird is he, bro? Like, he's literally like his uh, he just he just does he does stupid shit for stupid shit's sake but he's like like you are he's fucking so wise but so funny at the same time and it's just it's just a per, it's a perfect balance it's like like with the throwing the word cunt around as well it's like you know gary v gary vaynerchuk yeah, yeah I, right. I love it. It, he does he's like he literally i've never ever heard someone so successful swear so much yeah because they're scared of their ego and people are gonna judge them <laughs> yeah like, fuck them, i don't care that's what he thinks that's that's the thing. That's one of the other things I learned is uh, when when people start to dislike you for something, do that more because the people who hate you for it will hate you more, but the people that like you will love <clears> you more. So like if you if if people have a problem with you swearing and making all the sexual references and just somewhat uh, that's what I'm like. con- controversial comments. Uh, like whenever you do that some people are going to be like oh you shouldn't say stuff like that but the majority of people will love it when you say stuff like that and that's what it's all about isn't it yeah i'm a very sexual person all i think about is sex most things come out of my mouth is sexual related anal fucking like even to my parents right it's just all about ass and things up your ass and sex and stuff to me it doesn't i'm not visioning sex and it's just it's no different to an arm or a laptop it doesn't in my brain it's just life I call it an arm is no different to a vagina, right? It doesn't comprehend yeah, any difference. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, it's the most natural thing on the planet. So it should be the thing we speak about the most. So, yeah. for example, you know, I have a thing called an anal scenario. So, for example, speaking to my mum, she doesn't want to try some strawberries. I say, mum, anal scenario, we know what that means. Don't say you don't like strawberries until you've eaten them. Uh, don't say you don't like anal when I've <laughs> a cock up there, yeah? 
And she's like, good point. Give me a strawberry. Yeah. So the point is this, that <laughs> we knock things before we've tried them and we, we miss out on a potential experience because we, we, we didn't knock it. But what I'm really trying to say is that um, everyone has multiple sides to them. You're a different side in front of your nan, not yours specifically, but in front of our grandparents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are. We have a, would you like a cup of tea, nan? Yeah. Uh, I was reading this book and then with your mate, yeah, fucking, I fucked her up the arse and she was such a good pair of tits. She'd be appalled, right? And then we're different to our parents. You'd be different in front of the queen. Hello, your majesty, you know. So we're different in front of people. The difference between, say, Jim Carrey and me is there's no off button. We're just yeah. the same regardless. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I'm speaking to you about wisdom, I'll suddenly speak to you about sex. If I'm speaking to the queen about fucking, I don't know, that painting on the wall, I'd be like, so do you feel it? Fuck. Like, is it, does, does I, it still work? I, I, to be fair, I, I put this out there. If I ever met the Queen, I know it would be my only chance to meet the Queen, and I would definitely either try rap battle her or just do a freestyle and diss track her. That's fucking amazing, bro. bro who else would have done that? If you no, could meet no, the Queen no, like that, that. E- exactly. Head, headlines, bro. Headlines for days, and every year it'd be like it's been an entire year since Peach Gee's tried to rap battle the Queen in her own palace. It's it, like you. <laughs> It's like some people might, you know, try and grab her tits and they'll get escorted out. Some people might swear and abuse, right? And you've got the guy next to them listening to what you're saying. How many people would take that five second opportunity to just rap to the queen and say, come on, Liz, give me a beat. Boom. boom. <laughs> she, she, she'd either be like, appalling, move on to the next one, please. Or she might be like, yeah, this is quite amusing. Wait, you, but you're never going to see her again. Who gives a shit? Exactly. And she does the royal variety every year. So she knows she like you know she likes to be entertained. Like, do you know what I mean? If I if I can make the queen laugh, success. And especially that... when she doesn't really smile that much. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, bro. It's the first time the queen's laughed in years since the Christmas Ima- Imagine, imagine is yeah, it, like just imagine, like, because people don't remember what you say and they don't remember what you do. They remember how you make them feel, which is why being funny and being entertaining and making people laugh and making people feel good is so important because you're so memorable like whenever i think of a podcast i always feel like if i'm watching a podcast or if someone's talking about a podcast i'm always just thinking i'm like oh, he's mental and i love doing a podcast with him because it was just like the first I, i'm a bit more composed this time i've meditated before but the last podcast we did i spent about 60 percent of the time just like almost crying with laughter we we spoke about it was absolutely ridiculous. We had a whole ten minute conversation about how you when you, if you're gonna have a shower after you shit, you don't wipe, you just wash it off, save the paper. Like I don't wipe. No, I don't. Like, did you know what I mean? Oh, it's the carpet like my dog. <laughs> Mum's like, I've just cleaned this. For but that's sake. what I mean, bro. That's why you've got a hundred thousand downloads, and that's why you're gonna sell your podcast for more than Joe Rogan. Because Joe Rogan, he's full of wisdom, but he ain't funny, bro. He's like he is to he. he his personality is somewhat funny because he's just like, you say one thing and he's like, whoa, like that. He's just so over the top. But, but there's like, there's a, there's a special kind of fucking ability to be able to do something for like over an hour and fucking have someone laughing the entire way through. So like, I I do believe it, but yeah, it's just fucking humor is just the one humor is the way forward. I appreciate that. And yeah, so for example, I can talk, in the same sentence, so much shit I make you laugh, and yet so much wisdom I make you cry and realize, fuck, I need to take take my life seriously, right? Yeah. So I can help you with your marriage divorce, and I could talk so stupid about sex and assholes and just shit, made up shit or truth that you think he's talking shit. I'm like, no, this is a true story. I did get wanked off in the woods. No, <laughs> surely not. Honestly, I did. Right? So it's like, how can all this be in the same basket, right? And the answer is. There's no rules in life. Yeah, it's like only wear suits um, to work because it's what you do. And if you go to say Google, they're wearing fucking shorts and flip flops. Yeah, so there's yeah. no there's no rules. It's just your surroundings. Like we grow up because we're supposed to be more mature, but no one grows up. They're still that immature kid, right? And it's but, but when they go to a workforce, they've got to be mature and not speak about farts and fart at the desk. But when you get home, you fart in front of your kids. You will have a laugh, you know. Yeah. Parents fart with their kids, or well, my dad does anyway. <laughs> but when you go to the office, you don't fart. So everyone is that same person. Why change? And this is the problem. Yeah, yeah. People are scared to be themselves because of being judged. And as you were saying, if I say the word cunt enough times, people who are offended, they'll fuck off. The people who like me like me more. But like Bitcoin, when people sell, the next generation buy. 
And as yeah. long as people buy when people sell, the price goes up. People, I will lose the people who aren't, say, um, who aren't really um, bought into what I'm about. They were never there really there anyway. Because how can saying the word cunt really change the other wisdom that I teach? It's like, well, you never can't. really listen anyway. But then the more people who like me will tell more people. And so eventually you sort of drain the swamp as Trump did. And you're left with, say, the the neutral people. And then they spread to more good people. Yeah, as yeah. you said, record, another one will buy it. And it'll just happen. But this, the, the thing is as well, it's not like when the, you keep saying it, the people that hate you will, will leave. They won't. They'll keep watching and they'll keep commenting and they'll keep bringing, they'll, they'll keep commenting saying you're horrible. Stop saying cunt. That was a disgusting thing to say. And they'll bring you more engagement. Bro, people love to, if people look in the comments so and see people man. hating on you, they love it. And another, another thing that you've just made me think that I find really funny is you said the whole thing about most people go to business, go to work, wear a suit. Google, they're kicking about in shorts and flip-flops. Who's more successful? Google's one of the most <laughs> successful companies. It's like ping-pong during the day, you know? Yeah, like, bro, they got a slide from their top level to the floor. Just said the same thing, slide at the same time, literally. Is it? Yeah, bro, it's, but that's so, that makes, that's so much funnier, isn't it? Because they're having fun, they're enjoying themselves, and they're making stacks. Just like, imagine you park your car on, say, the second floor. The office is on the bottom floor. Imagine when you park your car, there's a fucking slide. Right. And you they, and every person goes down the slide. You start your light, your day on yeah, a fucking edit, edit, high, bro. Like a Otherwise, you're parking at the basement of the floor. You're walking going up the all lift, the stairs. Yeah. Going on the lift, walking up all the stairs. I'm fucking exhausted. You're depressed. Oh, then the boss. Oh, fuck. So there's John. There's Maureen. Fucking. He's going to talk to him about his fucking dog again. You know, everyone goes down the slide. Fuck, you know, look at my hair. Right, like, oh, look at it. Even, even if you were getting told off, if you come down a slide and your boss is just suddenly waiting there, like, I need to talk okay. to you, you, you'd be like, all right, what, what's up? It's like, you didn't do very well. It's like, okay, could I go down the slide again? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, right, you need to get your shit together. Go back up the stairs, <laughs> sort of back, come back down. Like, go down, go down the, go down the slide back. until you sort your work out. All right. Yeah, just... Just... <laughs> yeah, they say, go back into the office and sort yourself out, right? Go down the slide and sort <laughs> Oh, right. Bro, but whenever I whenever I own a studio, it's accessible only by slide, like a hundred percent. My my studio will be underground, and the only way you can get there is just walking <laughs> through this door, jumping down the slide, and then you're in the studio. And if you and if you if you're scared of slides, fuck off. I don't care. Yeah, or a fire pole. Right, <laughs> yeah. Fire pole. Fire and Sam. When there's a fire, they all go down the pole. Oh dear. Bro, when I when I, when I have my own gaff and I'm older and I'm like able to build exactly what I want, I will have a fire pole, like just in the mid, like a centerpiece in the middle of my house. So at any point in the house, you can just jump on the fire pole and get to the different floors without a doubt. Because imagine, just imagine, you hear that you're upstairs, you hear the doorbell, you just go <laughs> <laughs> slide down the fire pole. Wait one second. <laughs> All right. Oh my god, Amazon, yes please. <laughs> and then you look at the pole. And there's a bunch of hookers dancing around it. So I didn't fucking order these. Are you paying rent, love? Now that'd be on the top floor. It'd be it'd be the top floor would have a floor and the pole would continue up. So you'd have that, and then every other floor would be a fireman's pole. So it'd be a multi-purpose pole. <laughs> <clears throat> I'd love to keep going, but I'm getting quite tired right now. So we're gonna have to end this so we can start on a high next time. Yeah, um, I'm very, this it, is gas. <laughs> any, anything you want to promote? Ah, yes, finally. I've never had anything to promote before. Uh, to anyone listening, my name is Peach Geese. I'm a rapper, I'm a producer, videographer, and YouTuber. I've got YouTube channel, Instagram, so, uh, Facebook, all Peach Geese. I've just dropped my first ever single called Big Heads, uh, which is it's up on YouTube, it's on Spotify, it's on Amazon Music, iTunes, Apple Music, anywhere that you'll find music, it's there. I've got, a f oh, I don't even know how many more songs coming out. There's one coming out next month, one coming out the month after. I'm working on some more. My YouTube videos are starting up again next week. So, yeah, if you like content... Oh, by, I should mention, I do the videos... I was doing them daily, but I now do them five days a week. So Monday to Friday, every day, there's a video. So if you like daily content, if you like music, because it's all centered around music, if you like having a laugh, and if you like just fucking letting go and just being a bit entertained, then come check me out, because that's why I do it. I do it because I find it fun and... Apparently, a lot of other people find it fun. And also, 
I'll probably be on the podcast again because this was fucking amazing. <laughs> you'll be on the podcast again. Right, I'm going to stop this right there. Oh.